Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for our Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Wednesday, the 26th of October, 2022. Glad you could tune in and take a look at what's happening today. Two areas out there that we're going to be watching that could become our next name storms. And those two names, if we check them off the list, will be Lisa and Martin. And I think the northernmost system has the best opportunity to become the first, which would be Lisa and then the second system down there in the Caribbean, that's going to take a little longer to develop, I do believe. And that one, if it does become a name storm, would be Martin. Now, I know a lot of people are concerned about the Caribbean feature that looks very similar to where Ian got started. I think for the most part, we can rule out any chance that this gets into the Gulf of Mexico. 95% certain that wouldn't happen, and I'll explain why as we move forward. All right, try to bring you some good news once in a while. And um, yeah, it's not all doom and gloom. So let's go to the National Hurricane Center homepage. This is the two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and we got a 40% chance of development with this first system. It's a trough of low pressure there, and that means it's just an elongated area of low pressure. It's not concentrated just yet. And if we look at the five-day, then we introduce the next system. That is 40%. So this one's 50% in the five-day range. This one is 40%. I believe that the odds will go up over time for both of these systems. Looking at the satellite animation, this is what I mean. It's just this long area of low pressure, air is coming together, converging there, not really organizing just yet, but there is uh, a plume of showers and thunderstorms, much to Brent's dismay down here. Brent works, he's one of our uh, supporters and a good friend of the project down in the VI there, and he was hoping that it wouldn't rain today. He's got a big project that he's working on he has, for the better way, of, uh, for the lack of a better way of explaining it, a septic tank company called Backed Up. Great name, by the way. And he was doing a digging project, and he was like, "I really hope it doesn't rain today." This was yesterday for tomorrow, which would have been today, right? And lo and behold, it rained down there, pretty heavy at that. That's that trough of low pressure. So there you go. Already having impacts on Brent trying to get his job done. So that's the energy there. It, try, it will try to congeal. Uh, to the area north of Puerto Rico, southwest of Bermuda. And as I'll show you on the GFS in just a moment, the very simple look to it off of the operational, I think there's a chance it could become fully tropical briefly and you know become a tropical storm. And again, the name would be Lisa if it does so before this other system down here tries to get his act together farther to the west over in the Central Caribbean in a few days. Looking at the vorticity, I mean, this is textbook. Look at that. Everything stretched out. That's what was left over of, or is left over, it's still there, of 94L and its associated energy. But this is that trough of low pressure, the energy, the vorticity spread out over a large area. That should start to concentrate better. So when I show you this tomorrow, and I'm going to save this graphic. I'm just going to leave this tab up, and then I'll open another tab for tomorrow with, with it refreshed, and we'll compare them, and it'll be a good little meteorological lesson. I can show you how that evolves just over a 24-hour period. Then down here, we do have some energy trying to gather. And again, that should make its way over towards the west. You know, that's the motion towards the west and then getting into the central Caribbean with that westerly motion where upper level winds should be pretty favorable for things to start to develop. Now, I've had a few people on YouTube commenting kind of off the cuff that, oh, nothing's going to happen. Water temperatures are too cold. The troughs are coming. And it's a very... Um, you know, like definitive statement, right? It's it's planting your flag and saying nothing's going to happen. And I just want to enlighten you, not trying to challenge people, but, you know, that's not a correct statement. Water temperatures are warm enough. There's your 26 Celsius line right there. Actually, I think it might be this one up here. That one's 27, and that's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And our first system should develop in this area, so water temperatures are 80 to 81 Plenty warm enough, thumbs up for that in terms of development, yes. And then most certainly in the Caribbean Sea, water temperatures are still 29 Celsius, which is plenty warm. We're talking about 82, 83 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're warm everywhere, all across. So water temperatures are not a limiting factor. I want to make that very clear. In the Gulf, though, and there's nothing in the Gulf, I don't foresee anything getting into the Gulf, yes, close to the shelf waters, of the northern Gulf Coast and off the southeast U.S., as I've pointed out the last few days, yes, the water temperatures are too cold. If you had something coming along, it would weaken dramatically before landfall. We don't have anything coming along, 
So that's kind of a moot point. But in this area here, where we will be watching over the next few days, absolutely, water temperatures are plenty warm. And yes, the troughs are coming, but sometimes troughs can ventilate and make a system stronger, i.e. Michael 2018, Wilma 2005, and most recently, Ian 2022. The troughs are not always detrimental. That's more of a story for another day. All right, and so not only are water temperatures warm enough, but they are also abnormally warm through this area and slightly warmer than they should be. Nothing alarmingly so or ridiculously warmer, but we don't have any blues in here which indicate negative anomalies. So yes, their temperatures are warm enough and they are a little bit warmer than they should be. So, you know, with the atmosphere potentially cooperating, we could get development from both of these systems, one in here and the other one more than likely somewhere in the Central Caribbean, uh, maybe sometime near the weekend. And we can see that coming together very nicely here on today's GFS. This is the 12Z run, 12 Zulu time, or UTC as well. 8 a.m. Eastern time is when this will be initialized. That's what that means, that 12Z. 850 millibars, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere. Here's our elongated area of, you know, energy. There's energy there. There's the stuff going across where Brent uh, is. And this was earlier, so let's just move this out a little bit. There it is now. Uh, valid well actually that would be this evening but you get the idea there's all this energy out here it's spread out there's more energy down here nothing bundling just yet but as they say wait there's more and there is watch what happens we go to 36 hours and that's pretty quick there that system well to the southwest of Bermuda uh, let's just go to 72 that's pretty concentrated right there it's kind of spread out a little bit I don't see much in the evidence in the way of evidence of a front still attached to it, which means it would be more subtropical. It's got a little bit of um, uh, these little pieces of vorticity. Yes, it's going to be kind of embedded in there. It's going to look kind of uh, interesting on water vapor, but just from looking at it at the vorticity perspective, and I think we can look at the 10 meter wind. Yeah, you know, it's 1,002 millibars at the center, not particularly windy with it, um, but I think it could have a shot there at becoming a pure tropical storm at some point, especially since water temperatures underneath it are about 80 to 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Also at 72 hours, look what happens down here, our system trying to get going in the Southeast Caribbean. I mentioned yesterday, interest in the ABC islands and vicinity should pay attention to this because it could bring some squally weather your way as that system goes on to develop some. There's 96 hours, our first system, this could easily be Lisa, this could start to develop. Is the GFS a little fast? Maybe. I mean, we'll see. This is only four days out. We'll see if it verifies. Pretty low latitude, too. And again, it's knocking on the door of Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao down there. Pretty close as it goes by there, ramping up at hours, uh, you know, even at day five. Uh, the northern system weakens and moves out. Then by day six and day seven, Maybe, just maybe, we have a powerful system there. Strong tropical storm, a hurricane. Let's go over here and look at the 10-meter uh, wind real quick. And the pressure, yeah, about 9, what is that, a 6, 968. So, yes, that could be a hurricane in the Western Caribbean. Why does it show that? Well, look at the upper-level winds. Ideally uh, situated with a huge upper anticyclone in the atmosphere. The strong shearing winds to the north, yes, if it moved up here, it's a goner. It's done. But it's not going to move up there, more than likely. How do I have such confidence, if you ask? Well, let's look at the anomaly of the heights, the heights of the atmosphere. The atmosphere is made up of high pressure and low pressure. Large mounds of air and less mounds of air. It's a simple way to put it. And these anomalies here, departures from the norm, are represented on the scale that Dr. Cowan has put into the, the output graphic here. The more red is the gradient of the thicker the atmosphere. We call it, it's measured in thickness, all right? So this is so easy to visualize. This is your area of denser air. That's less dense air. It's not moving into the area of red. It just can't do it. Not on this planet and not in this particular version of the multiverse, all right? Seriously, it doesn't work that way. Physics uh, don't lie, at least again on the planet Earth. This cannot just bulldoze into this area of air 
that's much thicker in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is a fluid that's a thicker fluid, more dense fluid than is this particular and potential tropical cyclone in the model. All right, all right, so uh, that's day six. And just to show you, I'm sorry, day seven, and then by day eight, nine, 10, etc., it goes on into Central America, potentially, potentially. So we gotta worry about this uh, for our friends in Nicaragua. I mean, my goodness, how many things are gonna, systems are gonna affect them this year? But you see, the, really, there's that ridge, and that was a very similar setup to Ian, but this got eroded by a trough, and Ian was able to cut up across, and not quite like that, but you get the idea. This time around, that ridge is going to strengthen and really be strong. Much, much higher uh, height values down here than we saw with Ian. Almost no question about that. That's a large atmospheric feature that the models unanimously show that. So this should get shoved generally back down, unfortunately, for Central America toward Central America. And by the way, you're wondering what the Euro shows. Interesting tweet here from Andy, our good friend Andy Hazelton, the Euro playing catch up. And there's been a little bit of debate about this I've seen in some conversation about the Euro showing some strange things in the modeling that's more to get into than I want to right now, deep into the weeds of how the modeling works. And that might be affecting its ability to sort of sniff out what we call tropical cyclogenesis. Um, and so they got to work on that. The, the men and women that program the mathematical equations that make up the Euro. But as Andy points out, sometimes the GFS gets a little hog wild. The Euro is kind of slow and oftentimes they kind of meet in the middle. All right, if only we could do that with politics. <laughs> oh, not even gonna go there, but you get the idea. Yes, the duel between the GFS and the Euro always ongoing, just like in politics, right? And sometimes they do meet in the middle and uh, they come to an agreement and we can track with more confidence. But for now, the GFS seems to have a pretty good handle on things. The Euro is getting there. And once we get systems that actually form, then the hurricane models really help out. The h wharf, the h mon the global models do better once you have a formed vortex. So we'll see what happens down the road. Again, maybe two areas there that could become our next two named storms, Lisa and Martin. Stay tuned. All right, do me a favor and subscribe, like, share, hit that notification bell, and let's grow our YouTube channel if you don't mind. And the more we do, the more we can do. That would be great. Good to have you along with me. I always appreciate your time and attention, and I hope you learned something. Again, I'm Mark Suttoth for Hurricane Track. I'm done for today. I'll get this online for you, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.